The year was 1999. I was a senior in high school. I had just gotten my license. Marky Mark was not a valid musician. Neither was Ice Cube, not for quite a while. Rare Earth hadn't been a valid band for many years. But there was something that all three of those things had in common. You see, in 1999, there was a movie that came out called Three Kings that had George Clooney, Ice Cube, Mark Wahlberg, and a few other people in it. And this is one of those things that spawned my love for a certain type of gun. So we're going to get into that today. And the soundtrack was done by Rare Earth at the beginning of the movie. I just want to celebrate what a fantastic song. It's talking about the Desert Storm uh, war that we had. And towards the end of the war, some fictional things that may or may not have happened. And just talking about, uh, you know, going in and trying to get gold bullion back from uh, the wrong people and give it back to the right people. If you haven't seen the movie, I'm not going to ruin it for you, but let's get into why this caused me to love one gun very much and why I've been trying for several years to try to get this gun. This was actually one of those that I liked way before I was ever even into firearms just because of this movie and I thought it was the coolest thing ever, so let's get into it. I wanted to put the full audio in here, but at the risk of being demonetized, which I probably will anyway because I don't own the rights to the movie, I didn't put the audio. But what was this elusive gun that could get me so excited? Was it a sawed-off shotgun? Mm, they're cool, but that's not actually it. Was it an AK-47 or an AK-74? Again, they're cool, but that's not it. Was it an SKS? Because you know I got one of those. Was it an M16? Or maybe an M4 or some other variant of the AR-15? Not really. Wasn't even close. How about a Beretta 92FS? It was a handgun, but it wasn't the Beretta 92FS. So what was it? Dun da da da! It was the MIL, or MIL, Thunder 5 pistol. That's right, it was a revolver. And this particular one shot shotgun shells, and that's why I thought it was so stinking cool. Conrad Vig in this movie carried this gun, and there's lots of history on it. I think this was actually the first gun that got me to go on to Internet Movie Firearms Database and look it up. Here's some photos from various other websites. Guns.com did an article on it. And a lot of people think that the Taurus was the first company to put out a five-shot shotgun shell revolver, but they weren't. It was Mill. So you may ask yourself, what does the MIL Thunder 5 have to do with this video whatsoever? Well, as I alluded to a couple of minutes ago, the MIL came out in 91. It was released at SHOT Show in 92, and it ran for about six years up until 1998 when it was discontinued. Between 1998 and 2005, nobody had a 410 or 45 long Colt revolver on the market until Taurus re released The Judge. The Judge was kind of the only one on the market for several years. I think in about 2011, Charter Arms actually tried to release one. The Charter Arms revolver never really went anywhere. It was called the Big Dog, and I don't think they ever released it for sale. So what is this video about? So Taurus had The Judge for many years. They were the only gun that was on the market. And a lot of people have given it a lot of crap because they say it's a useless gun. It's not really good at self-defense. It's not really good for shotgunning. It's not really great for much of anything. But it's just one of those guns, like the Thunder 5, that has a cool factor to it. And the problem is, in my state, they're not legal to buy unless they were purchased a long time ago and transferred in. I've only seen one of them used over the years, and it was so beat up that I didn't want anything to do with it. Shortly after that, Smith & Wesson released The Governor which is a six shot, 45 long Colt, 410 shot shell, and 45 ACP revolver. And that is what brings us here today. So let's check it out. That's right, this is the Smith & Wesson Governor, and even though it's not really considered to be a very practical handgun at all because it's just kind of a ridiculous caliber, has a little tiny barrel for such a big shot, whether it's the shotgun shell or the long Coulter of 45 ACP, it's a tiny little barrel, 
a lot of people really rag on these guns and say that they're stupid and they're pointless. But just like the Bond Arms Derringer that I have, it does serve a purpose. Very close contact or pest mitigation or things like that, this would actually be a very viable option. And if you watch videos by Paul Harrell and you watch videos by Hickok 45 and other people like that, yeah, they can kind of say it's kind of a cool gun, it's kind of neat, but it really doesn't serve a great purpose and they don't see that it's always the best first choice for self-defense. But I don't really care because the movie Three Kings, when I was 17 years old, made me want one of these so bad. And again, that particular gun that was in the movie hasn't been made for many years. I've never seen one for sale, the Thunder 5. The Taurus I can't buy in my state. And actually, this is much better than the Taurus anyway. So 45 Long Colt. Uh, 45 Colt, 45 ACP, and 410 two and a half inch shells. Now, how do you get a 45 ACP to work in this because it doesn't have a rim on the 45 ACP? Well, you use moon clips. So you can stick six rounds in here. The little lip on the round where the extractor goes in clips into each one of these little notches in the moon clip. And there's a recess cut in the cylinder. You can see the line here right here, there's a recess cut in the cylinder for those moon clips. So you can shot 45 ACP, 45 Colt, or 410 shot shells. So it comes with two of these six round 45 ACP moon clips. It also comes with three of these 45 ACP two round moon clips. So if you wanted to mix your cylinder with two rounds of 45 long Colt, two rounds of 410, and two rounds of 45 ACP, or four shot shells and two rounds of 45 ACP, you can do that. Now, because this is a modern firearm, it comes with these uh, little safety keys that Smith & Wesson's been putting on most of their revolvers. And while it's a cute little key, it's used for the Hillary hole. And why do we call this little thing the Hillary hole? Well, when Bill Clinton was in office, the Clinton administration wanted, uh, they wanted to do a lot of gun control, and Smith & Wesson, in order to keep selling their firearms, made a deal with the government to put these little locks on the firearm, so when you twist that key, it locks the hammer from being pulled back, and obviously the trigger from functioning. To me, it's one of those things that, if it's on your gun, it's more of a issue with possibly causing a problem with it, so I never use it. I keep my guns locked up when I'm not using them, and I'm not going to use the stupid Hillary hole. I mean, it looks ugly. A lot of people hate them. They won't buy revolvers that have that in there. I still think it's a fine quality firearm. And I mean, you do get these kind of neat little keys. I mean, granted, yeah, it's stupid that you need to have these things because of the government. Again, any, uh, any restriction on guns is gun control and it's unconstitutional in my opinion. But that's another discussion for another time. But again, whether or not this is a practical gun, whether or not it's great for self-defense, if it's a viable option, if it's worth carrying because it's pretty big, it doesn't matter. This was one of the very first guns that I saw when I was in my teens that I just said, oh man, if I ever get a chance to buy one of those, I want one because they're so cool. Now, I don't own this one yet. I'm in the process of getting it. So this is the first video in my series titled, Why I Want Certain Guns, or What Made Me Want Certain Guns. This gun, I've been wanting since I was a teenager, specifically because of the movie Three Kings, and the MIL, Thunder 5, then the Taurus Judge, and this is just one of those firearms, it doesn't make sense why you want it, but there's a reason you saw it, you loved it, and you're trying to get it, so... This is the first part in the series. I thank you for watching another edition of Cranky Gun Reviews. God bless America. Make sure you support your two-way rights. Get out and shoot. And like Buffalo Outdoors says, if someone asks you to give up some of your freedom for the greater good, you remind them that freedom is the greater good. And we have the Second Amendment for a reason. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.